What's going on you guys? It's a really nice day out today. The local park down the road is empty, so I figured this would be a great place to provide some views, and I'm not sharing the technical information of this video. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. There's a number of reasons why your car might be slower than you expect. Let's start with the driver. If you're watching my videos, you're likely not a professional driver, as most people aren't. If you clutch, dump, a manual, or brake boost an auto on every launch, these can be inconsistent, and in addition to that, they're very hard on the drivetrain. Perfect road conditions outside of a well-prepped track are few and far between. The vehicle's health, which could include gas quality spark plugs, how clear the air and fuel filters are, traction settings, how well do you modulate the throttle and reduce wheel spin, that's a big contributor. Additionally, tuning. If you're on a modified tune, how well was it done? Tuners are kind of like chiropractors. Sometimes they can really help improve health and alignment and system efficiency. And sometimes they can break your neck, surprising you with an intervertebral stroke. Or in this case, it would be engine damage. Oh, yes, and al uh, density altitude. Yeah, that's why we're here. So you're probably asking, what is density altitude? Density altitude, or DA, as it may be listed on your time slip, is one of the most important numbers to understand, but one that I don't think many people do, car enthusiasts included. Most of them I don't think are even familiar with it. Density altitude is a combined calculation of true altitude, air temperature, which is based off of an ideal 60 degrees Fahrenheit, air pressure, measured in millimeters of mercury, and atmospheric humidity, since water is incompressible in an engine and it takes the place of some of the air and fuel mixture. Density altitude can vary not only throughout the days and the weeks of varying seasons of the year, but even hour to hour. This can be seen below as I share several density altitude records throughout the day local to me. Density altitude can be found on several websites, but the one I like is called FlightAware. You may be wondering why is the website called FlightAware? Well, as you could imagine, airplanes using internal combustion engines or similar are greatly affected by density altitude during flight. Research shows that a naturally aspirated or non-turbo and supercharged engine lose about 3-3.5% three three horsepower for every 1,000 feet of density altitude. Those boosted engines, formerly mentioned, lose only about half of that due to their compressor design to compensate better than a naturally aspirated engine's vacuum effect otherwise would. Therefore, you could imagine a plane flying at 30,000 feet would be at a big loss of power once approaching that cruising altitude compared to a much lower altitude flying plane or other aircraft. An example, say you have a 300 horsepower car at sea level in 60 degree weather, low humidity, average air pressure, that would be expected to be very near what that factory crank horsepower rating is. Comparatively, where I live, the elevation is about 3,800 feet, but with an average summer density altitude, the same 300 horsepower at 7,000 feet could be down 21 to 24.5% putting its factory output horsepower crank rating at as low as 225 or 240. Essentially turning down an old 4.6 liter V8 Mustang's power to the V6 equivalent when at altitude. That's why dynamometers measuring your wheel horsepower often are a corrected wheel horsepower number, not the actual wheel horsepower number. Heck, I've been at a dyno event where a stock 526 crank horsepower rated Mustang GT350 dynoed at 285 to the tire. Or as seen below, why my LS one 98 Trans Am with full bolt-ons could barely run its factory rated numbers. Even though the car probably had about 20% more power. Disclaimer, you need to keep in mind that when a vehicle is making full power or even more power than factory rated, for example, like in a negative DA situation or if you're modified, you may run into a new set of obstacles 
than a vehicle at altitude. These varying factors include tire and road temperature, traction management, and just overall driver skill needed to launch and control a more powerful vehicle. Previously mentioned, as can be seen in the DA, even how drastically it changes throughout the day. So let's imagine you're out, you're out on a Saturday morning and you decide to stop by your local track and do a few pulls. The DA might be around 5K if it's an area like mine, as you can see here, compared to if you don't make it to the track until evening when atmospheric conditions have changed and now it's like 7K, 7,500, that's over a six or 7% difference in the exact same area just over the course of the day. I'm pretty sure that could easily equate to a few tenths of a second in most measurements based off of my testing. Those who are lucky to live near sea level sure have it good in this regard. Probably not during flooding season, but in drag race season. When I've gone on road trips from the mountains to the lower altitude coastal regions, I'm always pretty impressed at how much more lively and quick to respond and rev the same engine feels. It's similar to an athlete training at altitude or with an oxygen restrictive mask on. So once that's removed, the same work load, it just feels easier and you have a greater capacity. There are probably some benefits to a high density altitude environment. I would assume that its mechanical parts are less likely to break due to less stress going through them because you're making less power. Maybe your transmission will live longer. You also might be less likely to get in trouble for accidental excessive tire spin at the stoplights as it'll take slightly more effort to break them loose. Of course, this would never be done intentionally. Side note, Teslas or other EVs which aren't affected by density altitude due to not having internal combustion engines do exceptionally well. An example can be seen here where a Model Y performance that's rated 0 to 60 at 3.5 seconds on a dry prep track did it still in under 4 seconds on a wet track with a second passenger and the car was somewhat weighted down compared to the same scenario in my Turbo Outback. It did it about a second and a half slower than my best times in greater conditions. Also hybrid or boosted offerings are something to consider if you live in higher density altitude environments. Just because the vehicles are rated similarly by the magazine driving aggressively on a prepped surface in good conditions, to capture those performance acceleration specs doesn't mean you'll be able to replicate those exactly. If you know what kind of powertrain will have reduced loss in your area, you may be a little bit less disappointed if you choose a vehicle of that nature and your vehicle doesn't feel quite as slow as it otherwise would be. It's always disappointing to find out your vehicle isn't as fast as you were told it ought to be. In my own GPS testing, it has been very interesting to see how various vehicles do compared to their rated numbers and even between themselves in different density altitude environments with back-to-back -back trials and trying to replicate numbers. Overall, drive what you enjoy and what you think extends your personality, but I hope you now have a greater understanding of why your vehicle might be slower than you thought it would be or why less powerful when compared to a boosted or EV vehicle, because sometimes those ones with less power actually win the race at higher altitude. If you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Take care, guys.